Oh, hey, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the Efficiency Bitch Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Leone. This podcast is dedicated to all the women out there who are aspiring to have a career while raising a family. And bitch? Well, that's more than a name and even an attitude. (laughs) We use it as an acronym. It's for bank, inbox, time, connection, and harmony. Each episode is labeled according to the correct topic so that you can efficiently find the topic that you're looking for. I'm here to tell you, you can have your cake and eat it too. The trick is finding efficient ways to get through the have-tos so that you can make room for your best life. I can show you how. Let's get started. Hey, welcome to the Efficiency Bitch Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Leone. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Beehive. If you've been around a while, thanks so much for coming back. I'm really excited for today's episode. So today is going to be tea for time, and we are going to talk to a wonderful expert who's going to teach us all about time-saving systems and how to use them to do more, well, to do less, but do them better. Um, And I'll let her tell you all about it. Hi, Leah. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so glad you're here. Let's start with an introduction. Maybe you could tell us who you are, where you come from, and how you do life. Absolutely. So I am Leah Remelay. I am a systems expert. I teach women, especially time-starved, busy mompreneurs, how to do less but better. So we are all about implementing a variety of strategies, including outsourcing, automation, batching, productivity tricks and hacks, and a whole lot of stackable systems, keeping it all very simple. But the result is that we go from that constant frantic or frazzled feeling to being able to feel fulfilled and having time to have and in your life. So that incredible impact, that message, that thing that you know you need to get out into the world and you are enjoying and feeling like you're experiencing a happy family, great health, your home feels good and in order, just all the things. I love that. You're definitely speaking my language. Um, (laughs) I am all about having it all, but not doing it all. And yes, exactly. (laughs) That we can, we can juggle all those pieces. As I was telling you a little bit before we recorded, um, I have a lot of th- like messages colliding for me right now. And I'm watching this documentary with my kids about evolution. And then I'm reading a book called solve for happy. And he's talking about space and time continuum. And, and then I'm thinking about how the way I spend my own time on a daily basis and, and really finding happy has to do with living in the present moment. But how do you live in the present moment when you're to-do list is never ending, or you're worried that you missed something from the past. And so this message is just all coming together perfectly for me right now. Um, So first, let me ask you, do you believe in work-life balance? Does it exist? And and if so, how? Okay. So work-life balance, it's a very trendy term. We hear it all the time. There's a lot of people who want to tell you balance doesn't exist, or they want to, you know, it, it sounds very edgy. It catches your attention. But I will tell you when I was hearing that 12 years ago, when I was at my deepest burnout, somebody saying balance doesn't exist was actually very defeating. And it just felt like, is there really no hope? And I set out on this journey to figure out if work-life balance really did exist. And spoiler alert, it absolutely does. Now, balance is not about things being equal. And that's what people like to jump into. They're like, oh, balance means eight hours in all the same places. No, it does not. That's ridiculous, right? (laughs) That is not what balance means. Balance is about feeling good. It's really a feeling. It's about feeling good in each of the areas of our lives. And when we feel good in each area, it doesn't matter if one area only needs a couple hours and another area needs a lot more. It's that sense of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that the word full is legitimately in fulfillment, right? Like we're still (laughs) going to have full lives. We just feel fulfilled instead of frantic. Yeah. When I started writing my book, um, I I originally set out to write, talk about money. I'm an accountant. I'm a fractional CFO. And that's what I do for a living. And all of this other stuff started coming out. And so I ended up using the acronym B-I-T-C-H and H stands for harmony. And it's exactly what you're talking about. It's all about agreement. It's all about fulfillment. It's not about the, the size of the pie piece, right? You have, sometimes it's going to shift and sometimes you're going to spend more time with your parents or your kids or your home or your job. And those things are going to shift. 
throughout time um, in every phase of that life. So that's awesome. I completely agree. And I do believe that you can be fulfilled. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to spend the same amount of minutes. God knows I tried. I tried so hard. (laughs) It was like the busier I got at work, the more stuff I added to my play outside of work to make it balance. And no one ever said to me, like, it's a scale, but somehow I internalized that scale that those things had to be equal. And I've definitely realized that that's, that part is pretty impossible. So if you're already there and you've been trying to balance and you've been trying to think about adding more to your plate in order to, (laughs) to find that balance. How does somebody who's already overwhelmed start to gain control? Like, where do you start? Absolutely. So there's different levels of overwhelm, right? There's true burnout where we're talking about your health is being affected. Your marriage is being affected relationships. Like all the things are, are going into critical mode. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's all these different levels of overwhelm. And so depending on where you are really is going to depend on your first step. If you are at that extreme level where your health or your relationships, I mean, things, things are looking dire, then I am going to say the very first thing you need to do is get some help. You need to ask for help, whether you're going to pay for it, whether you're going to ask your mom, your sister, your bestie, or your spouse, your partner, but you're going to need to get some help to just get at least a little bit ahead so that you can feel like you can take a big breath, right? Because in that worst moment, you can't catch your breath. It's just these tiny little (gasps) before you're back under the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that's going to be the most extreme now going all the way to, gosh, I just constantly feel like I'm just a little bit behind. I constantly feel like things are a little chaotic. I say to myself, oh, things are going to get better next week or next month. And they never do. Okay. If that's where we're feeling and where we're at, then The very first step I actually believe is really getting clear on your core values because we need to start learning where we should be saying yes and where we should be saying no. Mm -hmm. But I think people start too quick with like, they'll just say something like, if it's not a heck yeah, say no. Okay. No, not necessarily. Like, guess what? There are a lot of things I do that I don't want to do because it makes me a good human who's contributing to our community, to our yeah. world, to, you know, taking care of my children and doing the thing that I don't feel like doing. Totally. Right. So I've never been able to jump on board with that idea. But when I know my core values, when I know what really matters to me, and I can think about those and I can say, it is that I am generous. It is that. Um, I am faith centered. It is that my family is my highest priority. It is that I have a mission and a message and I'm getting it out there, right? The more that, that we each identify what our personal values are with no judgment, then we can start looking at all the things that we have in our life. And we can start saying, okay, which one of these things are not in alignment? You know, so often we're over scheduling ourselves because we're believing a story that someone else has said that if you're not doing this, then you're not doing the right thing. And that actually could very much be the wrong thing for your business or your family or your kids. I mean, I see so often parents who are stressed out of their minds, their kids are in way too many activities, but they've been Mm -hmm. told a story that if you don't have them in all these things, they're going to be behind. And then these kids are totally burnt out and learning this horrible hustle cycle that is hurting them. And it's just, it's somebody else's goal that went awry. So really looking at what our core values are, then looking at the calendar, looking at the schedule, looking at how you spend your day. Sometimes that means you're literally going to have to track. If you're one of those people, you're like, I don't know what I ate this morning, or if I ate, let alone like how my day went, then you might actually have to track for a couple of weeks, which I know it's so annoying. Like, I'm not even going to lie. It is so annoying, but it, but it works. It's powerful. It yes. totally does. I yes. Agree. Cause you start seeing, you know, where that time is going. And you're like, no way I do not spend that much time doing that thing. Right. And now you can start looking at, can I automate it? Could I outsource it? Can I create a system for it? Right. You can start figuring out what you can do with that. I agree completely. I, I track my time on a lot of different levels, but primarily in my business. So I own a fractional CFO company and we track by the minute 
the amount of time we spend with each client. Now our clients are fixed rate, so I'm not billing them hourly, but I am very curious about where I'm spending my time in my business. I track my admin time. I track my marketing time. I track my podcast time. I want to know where I'm overspending because it is so easy. It's just like calories. It's so easy for the wrong thing to slip in. And what I heard you say just a few minutes ago too caught my attention is you're talking about like work-life balance. People say this, but like couldn't really get on board. Um, and you said something, the same thing about, I forgot exactly the words that you used, but what I, what the message I picked up from you was these slogans that are coming at us, this, Hey, you got to do this. You got to put your kids in all this. It's all marketing campaigns, guys. Like yes, someone is out there selling you their crap, their, their service, their business, and you're buying it and you're buying so much of it. You're exhausted. And so sometimes you really have to come back to your own core values and say, that's a super cool service, but doesn't align with my core value. Or that's a super cool extracurricular activity. It doesn't align with what I'm doing right now. Opt out. I work with a lot of small business owners who start their business and they're like, oh, I need a marketing expert and I need SEO and I need a CFO and I need all these things. And meanwhile, they haven't focused on getting their product launch. And I'm like, you're way out of line, like way out of trajectory yes. of where we're going. Right. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And if I, I know that, you know, we can talk about these things, but so often people are like, I really want to actually like see it though. Like, can you show me the tangibles? That's how I am. I, once I see it, I'm like, Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So if anybody wants to actually see like productivity tools I'm using, like, Oh, this is what my checklist for my weekly, my monthly, my quarterly, this is what my systems look like. They can just go to gift.balancingbusy.com and I'll share that with them. Cool. Yeah. That's really helpful. I think there's always there's always somebody's idea that may just up level what you're doing right now. And I talk to yes. a lot of busy women, particularly in the business owner space or who are moms trying to do a lot of different things is this is working. I don't have time to learn something else. Yes. And I get that. That was me forever. Like yeah. I was that person who was like, I'm, I'm drowning. I'm so exhausted, but I do not have time to figure out that system or to train someone or to, I mean, I absolutely understand that. And, and so when I finally had my breaking point where, and my breaking point was severe, I ended up blacking out, having a seizure in an ambulance being taken away because I had stopped sleeping so that yeah. I could get all the work done. And when I honestly, before I even was discharged from the hospital, I was like, and we have a whole new plan. We are going to change everything, which is very much my personality. Uh, but I still had that same workload waiting for me. Mm -hmm. And so I found strategies and ideas to do all those things without adding more time. Yeah. Right. And, and it really is possible. And I know it feels like, but how, but there are simple systems and strategies that when you pop them in place, it just opens up that time and shifts everything so that then you say, okay, for every hour I'm opening up, how do I want to better use it? And then mm -hmm. we have to be so careful of like our mindset work, because the honest truth is most of us are in habits of, we feel that when we're busy, we are valuable. We are, um, you know, have more to give that this is our identity. And so we say we want to have more time, but then when you start getting more time, you just fill it because there's a cycle. So you actually have to break that cycle and be like, no, uh, I am allowed to rest. I am allowed to have time. I am allowed to have space. And that doesn't make me less valuable. It doesn't make me less anything. And so that's its own thing. I really had to work through that. It's like, yeah. oh, you get a few hours and then you're like, what else can I get done? Instead of recognizing to be more present as a parent to take mm -hmm. better care of your health, to actually get the eight hours of sleep that you need all those different things. Yeah. I write about it in my book too. Like super mom tried to kill me. I no doubt like that idea, that thing that I was trying to chase of keep adding more. Yes. It, it really did take its toll. And I find a lot of women 
talking about this right now. And I know it's just, I mean, we are a generation of women who was raised on, you can be anything you want to be, but yeah. oh, by the way, you still have to cook and clean and raise happy kids. Yeah. And so we've been like, <laughs> what are we really supposed to do? Um, so there's definitely a whole generation of women out there who desperately need to learn some of these pieces. And I don't buy the go take a bath kind of stuff. Cause sometimes I that doesn't either. help. <laughs> no, at least it doesn't help me. Maybe there's women out there where that does, but that, that does not help me. No, I, doesn't help me either. <laughs> I'm not going to feel better until I feel on top of things like yeah. me running to the, the bathtub or whatever. I'll, my mind's just going crazy knowing yeah. everything that's waiting for me. So it's not until I feel like I'm, I'm in control, right? Like yep. I'm controlling my business. My business is not controlling me when that shift happens. And that's the same for, I feel like I'm controlling my, my home care instead mm -hmm. of every time you step out of your office, you look around the house and you're like, Oh my gosh. Or you're like, I forgot dinner again. Oh crud or whatever yeah. that is. Right. Like being able to transform from that, which it just feels heavy. It feels tight. It's restrictive all the time to being able to feel like, wow, like I feel empowered. I feel like I am in control of the areas of my life, whether it's my business or the family stuff. I mean, it is, it's everything. I mean, it just, yeah. it changes the game. It totally does. So go, so to, I brought up my my world's colliding thing. And this documentary that I'm watching on evolution talks about the three rules of life. And the first rule is that those who evolve will stay alive, right? Because yep. if you don't yep. evolve, you'll, the earth will eat you. Um, the second rule is that competition drives evolution. Yep. And the third rule is that the ground beneath you is constantly changing. So in this case, they were talking about the earth, but I, I take this into human context and I say, okay, if you're a parent or you're a, a business owner, the ground is constantly shifting. You're constantly going to be changing things. If co your competition will absolutely drive your evolution. And if you do not evolve, you will die. Your business will die. Yes. Your sanity will go with it. You'll end up at the end of a bo bottle of vodka or in a seizure in an ambulance, right? Like you have yes. to, you have to evolve. You have to try the next best thing for the situation that you're in. So it's like one step forward every single day into a change of an evolution of a process or of a mindset. Um, and one of those things that's been very, very beneficial and worked out really well for me was the idea of outsourcing, um, both in my business and in my personal life. And I know you have a lot of philosophy around outsourcing. So let's talk about the process of outsourcing. How do you get started? Where is it most impactful to start with? Okay. So good. So first of all, I just want to say, I so agree with you. <laughs> and I think that there's so much power in recognizing that balance is actually very flexible and fluid. It is not rigid. And the best way to think about that is riding a bicycle. If you try to be rigid, if you try to hold still, if you try to keep everything the way it is, and you're on a bicycle with your feet on pedals, and you're not being willing to adjust side to side, you are going to crash, mm -hmm. right? But when we're willing to move, when we're willing to keep adjusting, then we stay upright. That is the same thing with our lives. So the more flexible we are, the more willing we are to constantly adjust and adapt, the better everything is. And that's just going to be normal because our kids are growing. They're changing. Our calendars change. Seasons change. Everything is constantly in change. So mm -hmm. I love that part. Now, as far as outsourcing, I love outsourcing. And I think the first thing to recognize is outsourcing. When we say it, we all think like, oh, uh, let's be honest. Everybody thinks like, oh, hire a virtual assistant, right? Like, like that's the first step. They and imagine I a call wanna, center in India right away. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, I, I want to start by saying outsourcing is not just about hiring anyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Outsourcing can be so many different things. I never go to the grocery store. I don't go to Costco, right? It is Walmart plus or Instacart or whatever. That is a form of outsourcing. Yep. So the first thing I'm going to say is look for the easiest, simplest places where you can save time. And the things that, you hate the most. Yes. <laughs> yes. You like, like you, you want to avoid them. Yeah. So often, what does that look like? Uh, that's like bookkeeping and taxes. It's, Ooh, call me. I know. Right. So <laughs> Melissa's here. Reach out to her or it's cleaning the house. So you get a yeah. house cleaner or it is grocery shopping and Costco. And you know, that's a, a hour, hour and a half, maybe more a week. Okay. You let Instacart or Walmart plus or whatever do that for you. 
So there are some really simple ways to save time instantly yep. that are not as maybe intimidating as going and finding someone. But when you are ready to find someone, I'm actually going to suggest, and this is very contrary to what people think and what most people say, don't start with a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. So often you think that a virtual assistant is the right place to start, but you don't really know what to have them do. Yep. And so they end up being like, what do you want me to do? What should I do? And you're like, ah, I don't know. And now you're feeling stressed because you're supposed to give them things to do, but you don't know what to ask them. And you're not quite sure. Totally. Find someone who can help you in an area that is going to increase your revenue. So mm -hmm. this is probably going to be someone who is an expert in some strategy and have them help you implement some things that are going to open up more profitability. Once you have that more profitability, then you can now invest that money into more time saving outsourcing options. But I really think that there's power in, again, this is where tracking all your time, knowing, you know, A, where your time goes and B, where your money's coming from and C, where you think there are holes that could open up more profit revenue strategies for you, but you're not utilizing them. Okay. Who could we find for you that could give you that revenue stream that could open yep. up, you know, more sales, more profitability, more income. And then, you know, maybe the VA comes down the road, but not until you are really clear on how you can utilize them. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of it has to do, I mean, I look at people's forecasts for a living, right. And right. people are always like, where do I save more money? And it's like, well, you only get to a point where you can save so much because if your expenses are lean and a lot of them are, you have to look at your top line. You have to look at the money coming in. And a lot of that really has to be leveraged in how you're spending your advertising dollars. If you're using SEO, is your website up to date? Are you utilizing social media? I find a lot of people throwing a lot of extra time and money at social media these days, and it's mm -hmm. not converting. Yes. So then yes, why yes, are you yes. spending so much money there? Right. It's Maybe Amen. we recycle posts and stop hiring social media managers. Although I'm not against social media managers either, but it's not for every business. Not every right. business needs to be 200,000 followers. In fact, a lot of times I won't do business with people who have 200,000 followers because they seem more like an influencer than a business owner. And so you need to understand where your marketing efforts need to go, right? In order to yes. get that top line revenue up to speed. Um but I, I agree. And then hiring people who can help drive your voice is yes. something that's really tricky, I think. But if you're careful with it, you can find some really amazing talent. How about in the personal space? Because, you know, business and personal, they collide. Um, you talked about housekeeping. That's a huge one. And the groceries, like I am right there with you. I don't know the last time I stepped foot in a grocery store. Um, I'm really into like Roomba the robot vacuum is like, Oh my gosh. Yes. End. <laughs> it makes my heart so happy that like at night while I am sleeping, like, so ours are named Fred and George. Okay. Yes, I love so, it. so Fred is upstairs. George is downstairs. Fred yep. is sweeping and mopping the entire upstairs. Cause it's all, it's all wood floors. Yep. And then George is vacuuming the entire downstairs, which is carpet. Yep. And it just is the best feeling to like wake up in the morning and you feel like you're like, that one thing you're ahead, you're yes. already ahead. So yes, I am all about looking at all areas yeah. of how you can save time. Even like I have this, um, vacuum mop. So oh, yes. every once in a while, you know, something spills and, and you got to take care of it yourself. And, you know, you need to do a little more than, than the Roomba can do or the eye mop or whatever you're using. And this vacuum mop, I mean, it's vacuuming while it's mopping or essentially like sweeping, right? Kind of. Yeah. And it's doing both at the same time. Well, in the past, I would sweep the entire upstairs and then mop the entire upstairs, right? Or whatever area needed to. Just that. I mean, that cuts it in half. So yeah. looking for these different strategies, these are simple systems. You start stacking them on top of each other and each is a little needle mover, right? Oh, that saves me 30 minutes. That saves me 10. That saves me 15. You stack them together and it makes a huge difference. It yeah. equals up to hours and hours. Yeah. You know, and this was something that I, I've been good at naturally for a very long time, which is where the efficiency bitch title came from. But 
I didn't realize that other people weren't. I can mm-hmm. remember being in corporate America and talking to my boss and he was like, dang, you're a taskmaster. And I was like, nah, I'm just trying to save. I, I spend 15 minutes today to save myself five minutes every day from now on. Like I've yes. always had that philosophy mm-hmm. in my head. So if you can spend extra 15 minutes today and save yourself five minutes every single day moving forward. Like that's how you get efficient. That's how you build systems to help yourself. And it can be in anything like where you put the mail, where you put your shoes, if you're yeah. running around the house looking for stuff. So all of it adds up and it's all very, very valuable. Mm, it's so, so true. I love it. Yeah. It's good stuff. Leah, thank you so much for a great conversation today. Can you please tell the audience where they can find you and how they can continue a conversation? Absolutely. So balancingbusy.com, And I can give you guys a resource pack to show you how this actually works in my business by just going to gift.balancingbusy.com. I also have my podcast, which is balancing busy. So, you know, you're on a podcast platform. You could go find that right now. And I'm on Instagram, Leah Remelay. I would love a DM if you found out about me from Melissa. Uh, That would be amazing too. Awesome. Leah, thank you so much for coming today. I'm so glad that you were here. And thank you so much for listening. If you've, you know, this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss next week's episode. And if you've been around a while, come back soon. Thanks again so much for listening. See ya. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for listening. If you're new around here, please be sure to leave us a review on any podcast platform you're listening to. And you can always reach out to me to let me know what topics you're interested in hearing about or maybe telling me someone you think would be great for the show. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at EfficiencyBee. Until next time, see ya!